uh, Alex asked, uh, and, and somebody else as well, I can't remember, I apologize, asked about the traveling setup, tracking and writing templates and what the setup is. I'll just briefly go through it since that people nice. seem interested. Uh, what's up, Brad? There, yeah, taking notes. Um, uh, I My templates are pretty much the same. You know, I have a, I basically have a few Pro Tools templates that I generally pull from based on what I'm doing. Um, so I'll actually open a blank session and then pull in like a vocal setup or a keyboard setup or a drum setup or whatever. My Ableton setup is basically just for writing. So I actually did pare down the template for this trip since I'm going to be writing out here and I'm not at my studio. So there's a lot of inputs from analog keyboards that I pulled out of the template. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. And then in terms of my travel setup, I've got my same laptop that I run everything off of. I don't have a desktop. Um, so I'm running my same MacBook laptop. I have a little uh, SSD USB drive. I back up everything to the cloud so I don't have backup drives and things like that. So I use Backblaze for that. Um, I've got my little Apollo Duo, I think. And I actually brought one of my 87s on the trip this year. I bubble bubble wrapped it, and oh, put wow. it between a bunch of shirts and nice. uh, and things in my in my carry on. Um, what do you do? What do you do at the hotel room? Do you put mattresses like up against the wall? I'm actually uh, staying at a friend's place, and it's it's white walls and oh, thermal right. walls. But it's yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, you know, I I just basically I just you know just record sitting like this, and um, it's funny when I there's a lot of. I mean, I'm going to be in studios and things when I'm doing sessions, so that you know uh, we'll have we'll have a more proper studio setup. But when I'm yeah. doing things here uh, in the house, I just I just hold an 87 in front of me, and it works great. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, I, I know enough about mic technique not to put plosives in there and, and be too close to the mic and all that. Um, it's actually nice. It's actually helping my mic technique. I spent the first five or six nice. days here when I was on quarantine. Um, just writing a song every day, just to go through the motions. We've talked about on the Discord a bit. I, I love the exercise for people that are writers uh, and producers. And really, even if you're not like a vocalist songwriter, to when you have an opportunity, go spend five or 10 or 20 or 30 days in a row and write a song every day and complete mm. it. Just do it just to do it. Even if you got other work around it, um, just going through the motions of it. It's like doing reps in the gym. So I've been doing that every day, writing a bunch of bad songs, nonsense. Well, not complete nonsense, but, you know, getting the practice of singing and writing melodies and all that and tracking my own vocals and stretching my yeah. vocal cords. And um, I think that stuff is really, really valuable and really underrated for people um, who are used to just doing one role over and over. But it's also helped, you know, we've talked so much about my technique and vocals on this. I'm actually taking things from my conversations with you, my conversations with Matt Beckley about mic technique and obviously Baines and Tizio guys who cut a lot of big vocals and thinking about how, you know, what's the difference in sound here versus here. And am I actually pulling my head back on big notes and probably annoying the neighbors here, but, um, but yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. So I'm at 87 and that's about it. I have a little MIDI keyboard. That's like the, the Akai thing that's like useful enough. Um, yeah. and, a, and, and I do have my external keyboard, um, my Bluetooth Mac keyboard, which has the numeric pad on the side and my trackball. Uh, and that's basically my whole setup. And obviously always remembering double, triple and quadruple checking that I brought my eye lock. Those, yeah, those small keyboards, those small MIDI controllers make for different types of performances on synths and keyboards. That's There's, exactly you, true. You know, you'll never play a piano part on that yeah. thing and that's okay. It's like playing a short, uh, short scale guitar or like a super thin neck guitar. You're just gonna play different, like a Hofner bass. You're never gonna play like you play on a P bass. It's just not, it's not really possible. It's not as intuitive. Those keyboards, you're gonna get more plucky melodic things out of or something weird and dissonant between two notes. And I think it's interesting to think about that as an, a separate instrument too. Like you're, yeah. the type of MIDI keyboard, you're gonna get a different type of record. You're not gonna get an Adele ballad unless you're the best MIDI drawer ever. <laughs> for piano with sustained pedal all built in like to your drawing. I mean, maybe somebody is like, like, you know, a virtuoso at that, but you should go into it thinking that way. Like you're going to do something different while you're in London, while you're not in your space, but maybe you don't have an upright piano. Maybe you don't have your 88 key keyboard. You're yeah. just going to go into a different cir a circumstance. And I think that's really cool because different types of records will get made in this type, in this um, part of your journey as a songwriter, 